points, seven rebounds, six assists, going two of eight from the field in her home debut as the Fever lost big. After 10 turnovers in Indiana's season opening loss at Connecticut on Tuesday, Clark had three against the Liberty Thursday, was the first time since January of 2021 in her freshman season at Iowa that the all-time Division I scoring leader was held to single digits. Caitlin Clark's transition to the WNBA has been a rocky one through her first two games. Well, let's keep in mind, it's two games, everybody. The number one overall pick is shooting just 30% from the field, and the Fever are averaging 0 for 8 points per play with Clark on the floor. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I felt like those numbers were a little harsh. I mean, they're accurate, Monica, but paint the full picture for me, right? She's, she's still a rookie. Uh, what do you take away from Clark's first two games, what we've seen so far? Molly, look, two things can be true. The WNBA is the best players in the world. There is an inherent and undeniable curve. And the second thing that is true is I believe Caitlin Clark will be all right. I think folks that are new to watching the W need to understand. The Connecticut Sun, her first game, literally the stingiest defense in the league. They gave up the least points per game all last season. Alyssa Thomas is a uh, locomotive going downhill. And DeJanae Carrington is a fantastic defender. She guarded Kaylin Clark for most of that ball game. When she went out with cramps, that's when she was able to find some scoring in that second half. Her second game versus the New York Liberty. Oh, casual, just the runners up to last year's championship squad, the Las Vegas Aces, and Benajit Laney Hamilton was a candidate for Defensive Player of the Year. She guarded Caitlin Clark. And so she is experiencing the real live curve. These women are faster, they are stronger. Um, and yes, Caitlin still can shoot the basketball and she still can pass the basketball, but there is an inherent curve that is undeniable. I do think that Indiana needs to figure out a way to be a little bit more helpful in terms of getting the ball out of her hands and back to her with their play calling because she's still pounding the rock like this is Iowa and it is very much not Iowa at all. But I think she's going to be fine. She is a competitor. I will say, Legs, I'm a little bit concerned about her perhaps hitting a rookie wall because she did come off of a long collegiate season and is now a level up. And these women, they're the best that there is. Well, you know, <laughs> this is much ado about nothing. I'm not worried about Caitlin Clark at all. I don't give a damn if she has an off, if she doesn't have a great season. First of all, the Indiana Fever ain't that good. Let's get that out the way. Uh, at least when you compare them to the upper echelon of the WNBA. Let's just get that out the way. We, we, we want to act like, you know, they, they, they're all this. They're not. To the Indiana Fever, you're not. You're just not. That's number one. Number two, okay, like you said, Connecticut Sun, an elite defense. Well, when you look at... The WNBA, okay, there were two teams that were dubbed essentially super teams last year. One of them was the New York Liberty. So mm -hmm. you're going up against the creme de la creme. That's number two. Number three, expect Saturday to be no better. She going up against them again. <laughs> she getting ready to go up against them again, okay? So that's another butt whipping coming, okay? And this time, it's going to be in New York as opposed to in Indiana. Then you brought up how, okay, she had 10 turnovers the first game. She only had three last night, ladies and gentlemen. You want to bring that up, okay? I told you it wasn't going to be every game she turned the ball over 10 times, all right? You're, you're going to make shots. You're going to miss shots. You're trying to ingratiate yourself into a new league. It's the number one league in the world for women's basketball. She's new to the party. It's the first time she scored only single digits since her freshman year in college. We understand it's going to be some rough patches along the way. What you have to ask yourself is, A, do shooters lose their shot? Chances are no. When you can shoot, you can shoot. And eventually, you'll be just fine. You just got to figure everything else out. It would be helpful if she was on a better team. It would be helpful if that team was on that level. They're not. And as a result, you get to really lock in on her. Plus, she's an iconic star everybody's coming for her. She had the long collegiate season. Don't even get me started, Eminem, with the commercials, the endorsement deals, the obligations that came along with all of that without any kind of reprieve whatsoever. If the men can whine and moan about those obligations and the weight that it puts on their shoulders and how it could potentially serve to compromise them, how come can a lady fresh out of college? I would think... We should be able to understand that. In the end, Caitlin Clark will be just fine. She'll have her rough, her rough patches. 
She's not going to have a lot of great moments. We all know that. But when you look at her skill set and how transferable that is to the next level, to me, Tim Legler, it's very simple. Shooters do that better than anybody because shooters <laughs> shoot. That's what you do. Here, here's what, you know, the turnover is obviously a problem, and she's going to have to adjust to the length and quickness of these players and, and the strength and, and the fact that she's a target. There's no question she's a target. Like th th These players she's going up against at this level do not want to be lit up by Caitlin Clark, okay, with all of the hype surrounding her coming into the league. But here's yes. one thing I, I've seen that I did like, particularly even in the second game. Look, she didn't shoot well from the three. She's getting off good shots. She's getting off shots that we know she's going to make as she starts to get more comfortable. That's a good sign. Her ability to still be able to separate and get into her deep ball because that's a big part that makes her who she is. So that, I think, as she gets more comfortable and stops pressing so much and realizing, you know, she's not as, as self-centric about everybody being focused on her and she'll start to calm down. That's going to take time. I'm going to, I'm going to bring up one analogy and I asked Monica this in, in the break. I think Kayla Clark, in my lifetime, I think is the most hyped player coming into the W. NBA. I don't think that's a reach to say that. Maybe not with logical expectations that people that know basketball in terms of her immediate impact. I'm just talking about the hype surrounding her coming in. And I look at some of the dudes that have gone through this at the NBA level. Tim Duncan, LeBron James, and Victor Wembanyama jumped to mind. Now, here's what those guys had, though, that, that, that Caitlin Clark is not going to have. Right off the bat, those guys had physical advantages. Tim Duncan was mm -hmm. six foot eleven. Okay, LeBron James was six eight and was probably the fastest player in the league end to end with the basketball. Victor Wembanyama is seven foot five, so they either had strength or length or speed that gave them a, a, an advantage on the court just from a physical standpoint. Caitlin Clark does not have any advantages physically. She's not going to be quicker than the people she's playing against. She's not longer. She's not stronger. So the adjustment period for her is going to take even longer in terms of having that consistent night-to-night -night impact. She's got to understand certain passes got through at Iowa aren't getting through at this level. They're going to be tipped. They're going to be deflected. She's got to be smart about where she puts the basketball, getting into her shot, the sets don't run for her, the adjustment period is important, the coaching's important, the team she's on is important. She can't just step on the court and be physically dominant the way some of the NBA guys that were hyped did. So just give her time, pump the brakes. If I give her one piece of advice, it's this. Just try to get a hold of your overt this, uh, frustration that you're constantly exhibiting. Oh, yeah. the, at the pro level, you can't be doing that all the time, looking at the sideline with your palms up and looking up in the stands. you got to just play through it because they're going to sense weakness and they're going to come for you even harder. That's my advice to Caitlin Clark. Yeah. I agree with that, Legs, uh, particularly as a rookie, right? Like, you're, you're new to this, so get the body language under control. And I think you're absolutely right in physical advantage. Just since women's basketball is up, a little moment of history in women's basketball, the last player that was both an MVP and Rookie of the Year was Candace Parker, who at 6'4 mm. did have some of those physical advantages that you speak of, Legs, that Caitlin doesn't necessarily have. But um, there's a lot of pressure on her shoulders. I hope she's taking care of her mentals, as we've heard um, from Marshawn Lynch. And I do know that her teammates enjoy her. They don't think that the hype has gone to her head. They are a team. They're working to grow and to be better together. Mm. All right. Well, we'll see her again against the Liberty. That's um, Sunday at 1 on ABC.